HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Every family vacation, my kids break into the can-can. Can we go to the theme park? Can we go to a ball game? Can we get snacks? It can get expensive. But at Red Roof, we get a great price on clean, comfortable rooms and wake up rested and ready to hit the road again. This summer, when we rest and repeat at Red Roof, staying two separate times can earn us a free night. Plus, Ready Reward members can save up to 20% with exclusive rates. Book at redroof.com. I mean, dot com. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com and Gusto. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Gusto offers modern, easy payroll and benefits to small businesses across the country. They were even named Best Online Payroll by PC Mag. As a listener, you'll get three months free when you run your first payroll. Sign up and give it a try at gusto.com slash accelerate. That's gusto.com slash accelerate. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast uh, continues to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, entrepreneurs, sales professionals. Um, you name it, if it's got to do with business. Uh, and that is really because of the guests. We, we continue to uh, enjoy inclusion on lists of some of the best podcasts to listen to. Uh, and it's the guests that make that happen. These are folks who have expertise in a particular area of business, and they join me for a conversation where they share that with all of you. That way you can get what you need. You can get your questions answered hear ideas, uh, whatever it is that you want to take back into your business and implement so that you can be more successful and happier. Today is no different. Uh, My guest today is Rob Brayman. Rob has spent the past 15 years working with business owners to improve strategic planning, operation, growth, and profitability. He founded Cogent Analytics to improve and build Main Street businesses across the country. 
It's his mission to bring tools of better management, organization, and profitability to privately held small to mid-sized businesses and to deliver his services with integrity and transparency. The foundation of his value system started in the U.S. military as a young man serving with SOCOM. His deeply rooted personal code is what he demands of himself every day and is what he asks the employees of Cogent to embrace. Service to others under this code is at the very core of the entrepreneurial spirit and of which is a foundational pillar at Cogent. Thanks so much for joining me today, Rob. Diane, greatly appreciate you having me on the show. Well, I am thrilled. We're going to be talking about, uh, in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. We are going to be talking about values and um, how they impact uh, a, a company's growth. And um, I am curious from your perspective, you know, doing the work that you do, I'm wondering what you are seeing as some of the biggest challenges that small businesses are facing today. I could probably go on for a three-hour stint, but I will try to abbreviate <laughs> it. Um, big challenges, little challenges. Big challenges first for startup companies and even companies that are growing. Capitalization still in today's world tends to be a challenge, um, both because mm -hmm. securing debt as well as how we manage cash flow within the business and making sure that they are, there's clear fiscal responsibility. Um, lenders are conservative by nature, and most often when we need money, we're asking for money uh, when we're in the greatest need. Usually that means that <laughs> banks tend to not wanna lend at that point in time, and there is less of a strategic position towards how we approach our business on a day over day, week over week, month over month basis. Um, so capitalization being number one, number two is probably organizational engineering. And that's having the right hats on the right people in the right chairs. Um, operational or process management is how you functionally do what you do for a living, and then KPIs are a measurement process to define roles and responsibilities and creating a high-performing organization um, is driven through the measurement process. And, and we fondly refer to it, Diane, as the Cogent Analytics Profit Platform. Um, we've distilled down some very complex business theorem into really four business, uh, business pillars that either contribute or detract from profitability. And I can review all those with you if you'd like. Yeah, I would actually um, like it if you would, um, but before you do, uh, so I, I mean, I appreciate uh, the input on the, the challenges. I agree with you, it sort of feels like companies are in a catch 22 because they don't necessarily manage their cash flow well so they end up in need and as you're saying that's when banks don't want to lend them because they're like like too needy so um and then yeah, you end it up seems with like high, cash flow seems to be a big deal well you end up in with high risk lenders and i've always referred to them mm. as the business payday loan these are these asset yeah. lenders out there that do weekly sweep accounts um, and the interest rates are exorbitant. So fundamentally, as hard as you're working to get yourself in a tough cash position, to then borrow what I call a business payday loan is just exacerbates a bad circumstance to begin with. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. You just dig a deeper hole. That, that's yeah, what we really. see in client representation. You know, we're, we're out there on the front lines on Main Street every single day working with small business owners that you know, the thing that inspires me the most is these are, these are real people. These are hardworking, honest, integritous, decent uh, families that make the leap into business ownership. And most often they're great technicians without yeah. the experience of running the business of the business. So, um, you know, if I have good counsel, strategic planning is really the beginning of the Venn diagram that I was uh, alluding to. Uh, business uh -huh. development, which is sales and marketing, not and or, it's sales and <laughs> marketing. 
<laughs> um, organizational engineering, which is how we acquire people, how we train our people, how we build our culture. And culture is critical, critical, critical to any business. Um, how we retain our staff, how we do counseling, how we develop from internal, how do we set standards of efficiencies within our people, how do we develop our process or process engineering, which functionally defines how everybody goes to do their job. And I'm not talking about a job description. I'm truly talking about a measurable process or SOP within a company that allows you know, the, the functionality of the company should not be predicated on a name of an individual. The mm -hmm. functionality of a company should be defined by its processes that people should be interchangeable. Um, hence, finding the right person is so critical. You know, what I see is business owners, they will make a hiring decision and then hold on to a bad hire you know, for a year or longer, hoping that that bad hire is going to get better, even when they knew the bad hire wasn't going to get better 30, 60, 90 days into the relationship. But it was so yeah. painful to find that person to begin with that they're just <laughs> careful of re releasing one bad child to go out into the world to try to find another. And vigilance yeah. and diligence is critical, especially to the small business owner. Okay. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. That was an awful lot. So I want to break it down. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I really, I mean, it's so valuable, everything that you're saying. And I think it is so true that so many people go into business for themselves because they're really good at something or they're really passionate about something. And they don't necessarily have the tools to be a business owner. And, and make sure that these systems and processes are in place. So um, I think you said at the top is uh, strategic planning. Yeah, is and that we, right? And then sales and marketing? Yeah, we built a Venn diagram and I would reference everybody to it. It's, it's at the, the Coach and Analytics website. Um, we did not put the big circle around the Venn diagram that defines strategic planning because it really convoluted the page a little bit so we stuck with the four pillars in its illustration but it's in the it's okay. on the solutions tab if I could give you a reference point but the four right. pillars is business development which is sales and marketing organizational right. engineering which is people um, process okay. management or process engineering which is your operations of your company and then measurement control systems key performance indicators okay. whether financial or operational all contribute or detract from profitability. And they can't stand alone as one pillar. Yeah. The stool has yeah. to have all four legs or it falls over. Yeah. Um, okay. And, 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 I, and if I give you an anecdotal, you know, you could have the best okay. selling process in the world, but if you don't have people to drive the process and you're not measuring performance, they're going to underperform. Um, yeah. Conversely, if you've got great, operational systems developed and you have no measurement of those operational systems, sales will never know how much capacity they can sell into. If you have great people in your organization, but poorly defined operations and no measurement, again, it will detract from profitability. So I'm just giving you an anecdotal why all four pillars were defined the way they were. The one thing I would want your listeners to visualize is the strategic planning bubble around the entirety of that concept. Um, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a diehard planning guy, and I've been <laughs> advising small business owners for a really, really long time, darn near two decades. I think I'm in my 17th year. And, and you know, although it creates a lot of joy, a couple of the lessons that I've learned about small business owners is most everything is the, is the fire that's two inches below their hind end, as opposed to... Yeah thinking strategically about how much sales they can generate this year, thinking strategically about who they're really going to need to hire, thinking strategically about their margins. So sorry for the very long answer to a, a, to a short question. No, I, please do not apologize. I think it was great. And I completely agree with you. I see it all the time. And that's, that's, you know, why we're talking about it because I agree it, it is, 
it's unnecessary. It's one of those, boy, it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, and, and I love process and systems. I, I'm a, I'm a you know, process gal because I think systems help uh, any business, A, stay on course. Uh, you can bring in anybody. Anybody can leave. You know, it, it just it prevents some bumpy roads if there's very clear process. You know what the expectation is. As you said, measurement's important. You can measure it because you've got something in place. And it's not this fly by the seat of your pants and hope that um, everything gets done, which actually leads me to a question I want to ask you before I forget it. And then I, I want to go back and, and start picking some of these apart. Talk about um, how important that's, you know, I want to say better leadership, but I'll just say leadership is in a small business as opposed to this attitude of let's just get it done. Let's just serve the customer. Let's just, you know, uh, sort of nose to the grindstone sort of blinders on attitude oh the the most and we do a full organizational review so we have a discovery process where our analysts will go in from two to five days depending on the scope or nature of the discovery and we part of that is an organizational evaluation so we interview leadership staff we interview all the way down to the line person and part of what we're trying to discern is the culture from within the company. What kind of leadership structure is there? How do people engender the overall mission of that company that they're representing? Mm -hmm. And I want you to, and I'll put that in context, right? If you're a, if you're a manufacturing company, that person out on the line that's manufacturing your process has as much positive or negative impact on the success of your company as the guy sitting in the president's chair. And sometimes more so considering the right. impact to QA, QC, or any one of a number of issues that could occur. But, you know, we see cultural issues all the time. And it's interesting, small business owners love their people, by and large. I would say a strong percentage, yeah. 85, 90%, want to do the right thing by their people. Interestingly, when you interview their people, what you uncover is lack of communication, <laughs> lack of clearly defined task, lack of clear expectation, lack of measurement. So somebody knows whether it's a woohoo or a boohoo, as I always say, right? You have to, uh, your employees must know what they're fighting for every day and they've got to know yeah. how they're being measured because people by nature want to excel. They want to take ownership of those expectations held for them. And, it, and in absence of those measurements or expectations, then you're destined to failure. And, and we uncover it in all, virtually every discovery, we will uncover kind of that shocking moment for the client that they're running a pretty good business and they feel, and I say that very elongated <laughs> feel, they feel like their employees are really happy. And yet when we interview yeah. them, you find all this dysfunction that's going on. It's always that, that aha moment for the client that they yeah. realize that little business that they were is not the business that is, you know, they, they, they currently are at the helm of. And, and they've defined all of these dysfunctions through not maturing their company up to the science of business. And I believe business is a science. Um, you know, the fly by the sea, the pants, lack of mission, lack of vision, lack of culture is always destined for problems. No question. No question. And I was laughing because I am actually dealing with this right now with a client on Friday. I'm going to be sitting down with them to go over my observations and, and suggestions. And, mm -hmm. of it. Oh. And, and it is so true. It is always about communication, expectations, participation, vision. I mean, it, it is, and it is so funny that business leaders, business owners, especially in small business, think they are communicating because they, or they think everyone just knows. They, they infer. After all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so, right. Not a mind reader. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's unfortunately, uh, it's unfortunate. I, I, will, I will simply leave it there. Well, you cannot, 
I hate to give you a silly adage, right? And I'm sure you've said it over the course of your career you, 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 to another client. You, you cannot mm -hmm. manage what you do not measure. And, yeah. and systems drive people. People don't drive systems, right? So those are, yeah. those are two key points that we could do a whole show on that yeah. if, I could, if I could instill those two things in your listeners as they, as they listen to me prattle on this afternoon, it is a profound impact to the operations and success of your company. So true. That, I mean, it's incredible. So explain to me a little uh, more about organizational engineering, if you would. So I look at organizational engineering from, from top down. In my view, with small to mid-market companies, leadership plays a very large role in the effectivity of a company, usually starting with the business owner themselves. Um, mm -hmm. But you're talking about leadership structure. You're talking about team development strategically. You're talking about roles and responsibilities. And I, and I usually stay away from the word job description because a job description in its old adage was something that ended up in a desk drawer. Um, I yeah. like performance-based job responsibilities. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. I apologize. Um, it's how communication works either inter interdepartmentally or within leadership mm. group. It's interdepartmental functionality. It's recruiting practice. It's retention practices. It's performance evaluations, incentivization, discipline and compliance, training and accountability, you know, what kind of structure are you trying to build? And are you really building it? Or are you just doing a lot of work every day and everybody's running around with chicken with their heads cut off? So <laughs> organizational engineering really, really is a concept of starting with the very top of the organization and building communication systems and functionality systems and, and being able to get greater effectivity out of your group. I always say that as a business owner, your job as a president is to get your entire group to harmoniously work together to an end goal, talk, which talks about service to the customer, and at the end of the day, profitability to the company. See, profit can't be first if mm -hmm. your culture is right. You know, profit should be managed aggressively. It should be engineered aggressively, but it should never be at the expense of your customers or your people. Right. This conception. Oh, that so true. I hold that. I hold that out as a, as a tenant of our belief structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to take a quick sponsor break so then I can just keep going with this conversation because I have just a ton of questions for you. Absolutely. Excuse me. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by <laughs> Audible.com and Gusto. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Breathe to Succeed by Sandy Abrams and Leading Loyalty by Lena Renee. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth Explore the books that are of interest to you and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Everyone loves payday, but loving a payroll provider? That's a little weird. Still, small businesses across the country love running payroll with Gusto. Gusto automatically files and pays your taxes. It's super easy to use, and you can add benefits and management tools to help take care of your team and keep your business safe. It's loyal. It's modern. You might fall in love yourself. Listeners get three months free when they run their first payroll. So visit gusto.com slash accelerate to check it out. Today, we are speaking with Rob Brayman about how company values improve the bottom line. So, Rob, you um, have mentioned this a couple of times, and I wrote myself a note because I wanted to make sure that I um, asked you about this, uh, the importance of culture. So please talk about, you know, good culture, bad culture, what, what, 
you know, what's going on with culture and companies and the impact that it has. I think the, I think the best way for me to speak to this is through my client experiences and through the development of Cogent Analytics. I have said that the success of high performing organically grown companies is rarely predicated on the efforts of one or two people. Although you most often have a business owner or a good second in charge that inspires people to do more. Um, usually your best performing organically grown companies, it, there is a clearly defined mission and people love coming to work because they're inspired by what they do every day as opposed to the drudgery of a J-O-B. So when we mm -hmm. talk about culture being critical, it starts with leadership and it starts with how we engender from the newest employee to the most senior tenured employee. How, does, how do people interact together and is there a collaborative nature? Is there a clear goal or objective set? You know, in my own personal experience, Cogent Analytics is made better not because Rob Brayman's a savant, but because I've been able to organizationally engineer this firm where everybody has embraced the mission and everybody fights every single day to make the company better. Hence, the best ideas come from the bottom up and we install those ideas mm -hmm. and people take great pride in their participation with the firm because there's a common mission and they got to participate. It, it instills those esteem values in your employees where they, they consider themselves a vested participant. And, and I, can't, yeah. I can't hit the hammer on this nail too many times. If, if I was going to overemphasize this point, you can, you can see a, a company with, with all of the right systems, tools, great ideas, and even a pretty smart leader at the head of the helm that truly underperforms because people have a J-O-B. They're not, they're not inspired. They, they get their paycheck every week. Usually those organizations have high turnover. Usually those organizations have customer service problems. They have quality assurance problems. They have any one of a number of things because the employees are the ones that are driving the performance of the company, not the brilliance of the leader. So I see that day in and day out, week in and week out, where we'll go in and do a discovery with a, with a client and, and you can see when a culture is just not right and the negative impact it has on overall performance. Thank you for that. I think it is so critically important that business owners um, acknowledge, you know, identify and acknowledge uh, the actual culture they have <clears throat> growing in their business because it it really can just make such a difference. And I think a, a lot of times it feels to me like what happens is if you have employees who uh, like um, are disgruntled or are gossipy or spreading rumors or, you know, not necessarily working up to their potential. The focus goes on those people instead of, okay, what is, what is the dynamic that is underway here that is encouraging or so perpetuating true. or allowing, right? That sort of behavior. So true, right? What's the root cause analysis, not yeah. pointing the finger, which oddly the pointing of the finger usually is part of the culture. <laughs> Um, yeah. And, and yeah. can, can right. I give you a, a, an add-on to this? You know, it's interesting, sure. and, it, and it, it probably resonates with me the most because we just had this client. Um, the, this client would talk about millennials. Almost everybody in their company was 35 years and younger, and <laughs> these two gentlemen would talk about millennials like it was a four-letter word. And <laughs> And I said to them one day, I said, you know, it's interesting when your parents were managing you guys, when you were in your early 20s, they talked about you guys like you were the bane of existence. You know, exactly. mill <laughs> millennials <laughs> are a generational gap between your belief structure and theirs. And if you're in leadership, your job is to understand where they're coming from. 
I find millennials to be high performing. They still mm -hmm. want to build a family. They still want to buy a house. They still want to have the niceties. They want to build a career. They want to be vested in their organization, which when people talk about millennials transitioning out, in and out of companies, it's usually because they haven't found the right culture that they feel comfortable living from within. Yeah. So, so if you're having a problem with millennials, I would argue that you need to self-examine and look at the culture that you're building in your company because your, your people are your greatest asset. Boy, I, I so, that so resonates with me. And I agree with you. Whenever people talk about millennials, I just look at them and say, well, okay, here's the thing that I know about. First of all, you can't generalize about a group of people. Amen. Second of all, the behaviors that you're complaining about, I see in people my age <laughs> and have seen in people my age my whole work life. So what? It, it's not... It, it, it's not this group that they're not in, and we're, we raised them in That's my right. That's you know, right. generation. We, we raised them to be that way. So guess what? They, they, they are who they are because somehow we gave them strong morals, strong social compass. They want to have work-life balance. You know, they want to feel like they contribute. I, I uh, it's, it's just, the craziest thing to me. And I think another thing that you said, which is so to point is every generation goes through this where they think the younger generation is entitled, lazy, fill in the blank. It, That's it's, right. Ugh. Which yeah, makes, crazy. as a business advisor, it makes you and I crazy because we <laughs> see the difference in culture and environment and good practice and bad practice. Um, and I've always said it's interesting when you're going into a company that's, that's, they've got most things right, right? They're working really hard. They've got good culture, they've got good structure. It doesn't mean they've got it perfect. They've got areas of opportunity to improve upon. And you walk into that company, you can see the tangible difference and yet when you go to an underperforming company and you're giving them good advice, it's not that those owners want success any less. It's that yeah. their structures are not going to support the success that they're trying to achieve. And moreover, they're usually in denial about the things that are standing in their way from achieving that success. Yeah. So usually yeah. the first hurdle is to get them through that process where you can take the blinders off and show them reality. <clears throat> and, and fundamentally, that's why I created the discovery process, because what it allowed us to do is take a holistic view of a client's business mm -hmm. as a professional advisor and, and not living within the forest. You know, we, we, right. take, we take it from above the forest position and we drag our clients up above the forest. So that for the first time in a very long time, most clients get to see their business in a, um, in a very real way that they have not looked at previously. And that's, yes. that's the seminal moment, right? When you can get yeah. them to take responsibility and, and, you know, it's interesting in our line of work, we could prattle at our clients every single day and they'll do none of it. If you can get them to take yeah. ownership of it and responsibility of it, by golly, you can recreate the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It, that's, that's exactly right. And so, so part of the value is being able to look at it from the outside, because I think it, it is, I think people go to, um, what is it, you know, the squeaky wheel, or they end up trying to address the symptom, but they never address the disease. Root cause, that's And right. then they wonder why they keep having symptoms. Yeah, I can't seem to no. get over this, but you keep repeating the same bad behaviors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's well, the definition you know. of insanity? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. This isn't working, right? <laughs> but you keep doing it the same way. Of course it's not working. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ugh. But, but, you know, right, as a serial entrepreneur, I have... I have experienced all those same emotions. I have lived in the trenches with my clients. Yeah. So I, I come at it from a very real place. You know, I don't, 
you can't preach at people. You got to talk with yeah. them. I would argue that right. the same thing is true. And I, I'm giving you that, that metaphor because the same thing is true from any president to their employees, especially leadership group and below. You know, it is yeah. so critical to talk with, not at. There, there, it is no, there's no question. And one of the things that I loved about what you were saying when you were talking about um, the organizational engineering is that, uh, you know, ideas have to come from the bottom up. You know, we, we have to be engaging people. They have to feel like they're participating and they're contributing and that they're valued and that, you know, that they are playing a role in moving the organization forward. They, you, you can't be talking at them and down and, and do this, do that. It, they don't have any buy-in. That's right. And without that buy-in, you're always going to yeah. have a larger share of challenges. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I, I'm hearing, um, I'll say an overriding theme that, and, and so I want you to talk about this, about, because this feels like it really is a values proposition about this is how I treat people. This is right. This is what matters to us as a company or, you know, the leaders of the company. This is what we want for our people and from our people. Um, so if someone's listening and they're thinking to themselves, well, yeah, I, I want that. Is there a way they should be getting to that point? Like, is there a way they, they can be thinking about what, what are my values? What do I, you know, what am I bringing to this company? in so, that regard? So that was incredibly well said. I think the first step is to genuinely decide what the values of your company are. Okay. You know, you know, for us, and this comes from my military background, you know, for me, it's honor, courage, wisdom, faith, perseverance, and loyalty. Those are the tenets of strength, power, and character. They're okay. written on the whiteboard. Pe other people in this organization have adopted them as part of the personal culture you know, without that guide on, without that, that light, you know, the shining city on the hill story, you know, what people want to be aspirational by nature, that goes to our id. You know, people yeah. want to believe that they're participating in something greater than themselves. And if it's just drudgery, mm -hmm. you deserve everything you get. Yeah. Right. That, that, that core value system of what you believe, who you are and how you're going to lead is is critical to the development of any organization and you know if you're struggling with that a little bit there are some exercises you can go through to define your own value system that core thing that gets you up in the morning and drives your own personal behavior which isn't hey my business owns me more than i own my business which is very common for small mm -hmm. business owners right you know yeah. you're, you're running yeah. around putting out fires all day long um usually yeah. that's a symptom of, of a culture or an organization that is not well-defined. So stepping back from the fire and actually working on this attribute of how do I get to that key culture? How does, it, how does my company represent my value system is the first exercise that I like to talk about with clients because you can see all of the leading indicators. And most companies are, you know, let me put this in the right context. Most companies accept profitability far less than what is appropriate. So, and I'll give you an example. You've got a $5 million okay. business owner listening to this podcast today, and he's running five, 6%. He goes into his account and his accountant says, Hey, you're making money. It's okay. The accountant says that because he's got other clients that aren't making money or making one or 2% where in reality, <laughs> that company with well-performing engineered profitability should be a 10 to 12%. And it's how you go to market. It's how you develop your culture. It's how you develop your processes. It's how you develop that culture of performance measurement that people embrace and engender, right? Those things contribute and detract from profitability. And it's all facets of those four pillars that we try to focus on with clients. And I've done it over and over and over and over and over again throughout my career, taking underperforming companies and turning them into performing companies. And, and for the business owners, listeners, 
the single largest asset you have in your portfolio is that thing called your company. Most often it's your retirement plan. You, you may be able to set aside some monies pre-tax, but the value of your equity and how you deal with secession and how you deal with market growth drives your long-term value strategy. And if you're not on point in each one of these areas, 5% gives you enough to cover growth, cover debt, and maybe cover your taxes, but doesn't leave anything left over for distributions or dividends. Yeah. And you yeah. see people do it all the time where even when they're profitable and they get a little bit of gravy, that they convince themselves it's okay. High <laughs> performing companies are not defined by it's okay. Yeah. Sorry, I got on my soapbox there. I no, it's so good. No, 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 don't apologize. I, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Me too. I'm all about it. Um, okay. So um, I'm curious about this current economic climate that we're in and um, how you see it affecting small business owners. What, what's your read? So – all I, can di all I can give you is what I tangibly feel every day with the clients we're representing. Um, I have some concerns with where we are economically as a country because what I'm seeing is more and more small businesses in a cash pinch. Um, yeah. And, you know, what has happened is that the market – had some growth and they got top line revenue. So they went from a $5 million company to an $8 million company, but they made less money at 8 million than they did at 5 million, which creates cash constraints because they can't pay for the $3 million growth that they produced. Um, I see some issues with material costs where we're bidding work at one price and material costs going up and having to honor a bid where we're losing margin in, in the differentiation between when we bid it and when we're actually buying materials because we live in a just-in-time inventory world. So you, you bid based on best knowledge today. So there's some economic conditions out there that are affecting small business owners. I can tell you that we see more cash impinged business owners uh, in the last 12 months than we have seen in our existence. And it's for a variety really? of reasons. Yeah, it's for a variety of reasons. But most often, you know, when people experience growth, growth causes dysfunction. Yeah, good point. Right. So everybody yeah. goes after the yeah. sexy top line number instead of the engineered <laughs> profit number, right? Why do it if you have no intention of making profit to begin with? Yeah, good question. Yeah, and I did another, I've said this over and over in other podcasts that I've done, you know, profit is not a dirty word. It is the report no. card of a business. And profitability, profitability drives and it, it, how you contribute to your community. It is how you contribute with your employees. It's how you contribute with your vendors, with your lenders. Profitability, an absence of profitability, we have obviously a lot of work and very little compensation. Managing profitability, it should be revenue less profit equals what I get to spend, not revenue less costs equals what I get to keep. Yeah. And I, and I hate right. to do, you know, like the, the very simplistic anecdotal, but it, but it really is true. More and more people are so focused. Oh, I want to be a $10 million company. Well, yeah. Okay, if you're a $10 million company, what you intend, you know, it's funny, you got to almost drag them to the point of saying, well, if you're a $10 million company, what, what do you want to make? I mean, what is the engineer? Yeah. Profit? And then after you have profit, what do you intend to do with that profit? Is it capital expenditures? Is it, are, are you doing, is it going into CapEx, OpEx, or are you distributing it in the form of, you know, liquidity where you're making investments outside your company? most small business owners don't look at their company as a wealth creation vehicle. No, they don't. And, and I, I mean, I don't think it's so interesting because from what I see, they don't look at all they look at is revenue and, and right. they think, well, the, the money's coming in. It's like, okay, what? Yeah. And it's going out. And if you're not paying attention to how it's going out, guess what? 
you, you, you could be not long for this world. I mean, it, it is a crazy thing. It's like, I think they don't understand the difference between revenue and profit. You know, 80% of Americans work at privately held companies. And yet, privately held companies experience the greatest amount of pressure from their market, from their competition, from acquiring or hiring employees. You know, the small business owner carries the burden most often. Um, mm. Even in taxable consequence, although there was some taxable benefit for the small business community, you know, most of the liquidity ratios that would have benefited the small business owner got eaten up in a variety of other areas. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I am a champion of the small business owner. When I look at whether it's legislative impact, whether it's operational impact, whether it's human resources, I believe people are entitled to a quality of life. They're entitled to build a good staff or a good team and they're entitled to go to market with their, with their values intact, their honor intact, and being able to produce a good product the right way for um, an engineered value to profit. And, you know, I hope everybody on, on, this, on our podcast today, and I really want to say thank you for having me on today, listens to that key point, right? You, you, have, mm -hmm. to, it, you have to manage the pennies, and I don't, I don't mean to be preachy-teachy, but... But if you think of it in the context of a dollar, if you only get to keep three cents out of every dollar, then if you lose one of those pennies, that has a profound impact on your overall success. So yeah. it, it's managing to those pennies and, it, and it's a trickle, trickle, trickle effect. If you don't have a highly efficient staff producing a good product that, that is desirous in the marketplace, you know, you're, you're going to experience lethargic profitability and then create cash flow impacts and a sundry of other things. So yeah, boy, mm. it's so true. I really appreciate this conversation and, and this information, Rob, th this is really um, a, a bit enjoyable. And, and I'm so glad that you are talking about this here and on other podcasts, because these small business owners really need to embrace a lot of these concepts so that they can be more successful and their people can be more successful and engaged. And, you know, that it's that, you know, that um, trickle down thing that, that it impacts everyone and everything who's connected to a business. So thank you for this. Uh, truly my pleasure. I'm a, I'm a diehard believer that entrepreneurship is part of the American spirit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you when you put on your boots in the morning and you decide that you're going to either open a small business or take one over from your father or an uncle who's retiring or you decide you want to buy a business, realize that, that what you're also signing on for is you're participating now in the fabric of our country, right? You're, you have a, a, a communal obligation, you know, whether that be to the overall community and in, in hiring people in contributing in the form of opportunity for that community. Um, it is a profound, it, it's a profound thing when you say I will or I can and you open a business. And that's what we yeah. fight for every day. You know, I, I, I am one or as I usually joke, um, I always say I'm a, I'm a, you know, I understand small business owners because I are one. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it- Yes, you is. Yes, mm -hmm. you is. That's right. It, it, it is a, <laughs> it's a, it's a phenomenal thing when you think about the spirit of the, uh, yeah. of the entrepreneur. Um, and, you know, I hope that doesn't get lost sometimes when, when people are fighting the fight every day, it's, it's hard to remind yourself, you know, I have a sign that, that is hanging on my office wall that says, it's hard to remind yourself when you're up to your hind end and alligators that your initial objective was to drain the swamp. Yeah. And, and I, I say that adage to many of our clients because sometimes you can get lost in the fight and, yeah. you know, you, you really got to recenter and go back to why you're doing what you're doing and get control back, um, you know, and, and manage profitability as something that is incredibly valuable to the long-term strategy, the company and the short-term values. So profit is not about greed. It's about what happens with the money after it's made from within the organization. Definitely. 
Absolutely. Rob, will you tell the listeners how they can find you and anything you feel like they should know? Most assuredly. It's www.cogentanalytics.com. Um, and our marketing strategy really isn't about come do business with Cogent. It is um, thought leadership. So there, we have white papers and case studies and blogs and articles that have been written in trade magazines. You know, we, we want to get information into the hands of the small business owner. So please go to the website if you're looking for something in particular. If you just have a question where you're looking to get some business intelligence, we will be more than happy to support that cause. I will say that I've done this in the past. We do a, th a two to five day discovery, depending on the scope and size of the company. And we typically do that from anywhere between 12 and $10,000. What I will tell you is that for any one of the listeners today that contacts us, we will do a discovery with you for $1,200. That is a holistic view of your business in systemic review, people review, how you're measuring performance, how you're engineering profitability, how your vision is aligned with the structure that you're building. And, you know, if I can inspire one person, that's what we do for a living. And we're very, very passionate about it. Wow. That, that is very generous of you. I mean, it's tremendously generous of you. Um, is there, did they just say they, they heard you on accelerate your business growth? Absolutely. Uh, please, okay. you know, do the contact us, mention the podcast okay. that you heard it from. And I, I used to be very uncomfortable of throwing what I call the shameless plug in um, <laughs> because it kind of goes against my value, but we've had so many positive feedback and experience from clients that have heard us through this venue and then participated with us. Um, I guess I've gotten over my own little idiosyncratic behavior, but um, you know, business matters and it, and it's a science and it's yeah. worth the continuing education effort. You know, most often you get stuck within the forest, getting above the forest and looking at your business in a strategic holistic way that has a profound impact on your family and the family of your employees. Um, I'll jump out and throw out a shameless plug all day long. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if, uh, the way I look at it is, you are providing some really valuable information. And when people hear you, then they want to know how they can engage with you. So <clears throat> good for you for getting over that. I think that that is a very good thing. Uh, and, and listeners, uh, you know, I like to thank you. You are who we are doing this for. And I think you can see from listening to this conversation with Rob that uh, he is very passionate about the small business community and the success of the small business community in this country. Uh, so be sure to uh, reach out and um, check out the information they have, take them up on his offer. It's tremendously generous. I would also like to thank our sponsors, audible.com and Gusto. To get your free trial of audible.com and a free audiobook, go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up. For payroll processing you'll love, sign up for a demo of Gusto today at gusto.com slash accelerate. Listeners get three free months when they run their first payroll. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Hey guys, this is Gabby Douglas. If you have an active lifestyle like me, hydration is key. That's why I love the Hydration Watermelon Smoothie from Smoothie King. Blended with whole fruits, coconut water, and more electrolytes than some of the leading sports drinks, Hydration Watermelon is the cleaner way to hydrate with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. So you can recover and perform at your peak ability during the summer heat. Order online or through the app for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. Every family vacation, my kids break into the can can. Can we go to the theme park? Can we go to a ball game? Can we get snacks? It can get expensive. But at Red Roof, we get a great price on clean, comfortable rooms and wake up rested and ready to hit the road again. This summer, when we rest and repeat at Red Roof, staying two separate times can earn us a free night. Plus, Ready Reward members can save up to 20% with exclusive rates. Book at redroof.can. I mean, dot com. The world's best-known investor and Wall Street expert, Warren Buffett, once said, 
Wall Street is the only place that people ride to in a Rolls Royce to get advice from those who take the subway. Mr. Buffett's quote is remarkably accurate, but how many people would rather receive advice from him than someone simply guessing? Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, your single source for Wall Street knowledge and profitable guidance. Please join me, Todd Schoenberger, and fellow trader Tobin Smith, as well as host Veronica Dudo, for a podcast known to move the needle for investors. Tobin and I are seasoned Wall Street executives with deep investment experience, and we are prepared to share our advice to those who choose to listen. Download Buy, Hold, Sell today on the Evergreen Podcast Network or your favorite podcast channel.